Look around any UCI cross country World Cup race pits, and I mean, the bling is everywhere. It's carbon fiber, it's titanium. Wow, the electronic shifting as well. So there's wireless shifting, there's yeah. wireless suspension, there's secret prototypes, left and right, and 3D printing seems to be everywhere. That's it, these bikes are made for performance and with price tags to match, right? Well, or are they that expensive? This is what we found out today. We've crunched the numbers, we've ranked them from cheapest to most expensive, and we're gonna run through that list. Whilst it's possible to buy some of these bikes off the shelf as pro-level bikes, due to sponsorship arrangements with the teams and yeah. individual rider contracts, it's sometimes not possible to get exactly the same bike. That is true. So where we can, we've tried to kind of estimate, you know, we've, maybe we've got a retail price and there's a prototype or something like that. And I mean, the first prototype will cost a lot and then it's gradually going to come down. So we've maybe added 10 or 15% to the RRP. We thought maybe if and when this product comes to market, that's how much it's going to cost. Okay. Well, let's kick things off with our cheapest XC bike. So to start things off is the Team 31 Ibis Cycles Continental Bike. So this is Jenny Risfeds, Kelsey Urban, Lynn Gustafsson, and they're riding the Ibis XC, and it's got a power meter. Which is nice. It's yeah. also got a full XTR group set. Yeah. It's got Fox suspension. It's also got a race face cockpit, um, and the racer's choice, the ESI foam grip. Um, yeah, really complete package that's, compared to this list, quite affordable. Even though it's 7,800, in this list, it offers really good value. One of the Road World Tour's big hitting teams is Alpes and De Koenig. So their riders, Puck Peterson, Sam Gaze, Matthew van der Poel, to just name a few of their biggest stars, uh, they're actually racing in one of the cheapest bikes in the paddock. Wow, uh, and it is the Canyon Lux World Cup, just in case yeah. you got confused, and it's got Fox, it's got Shimano, but it's also got some custom Duke rims laced to mm. some XTR hubs. Um, lightweight Cello Italia carbon saddle, everyone's favourite choice, the ESI Racer's Edge, I believe it's called. Of course. It's a nice silicon foam grip, and that comes in at 8,300. So still eye-wateringly expensive, but on this list, relatively good value. Belgian brand Ridley are the frame sponsor for the KMC MTB race team, and it's mm -hmm. MTB, not mountain bike. Um, and they've managed to spec a, a sponsor, it feels like, for every single part. Pretty KMC much. for chains, obviously. As, I mean, it's the title sponsor, but it's on a SRAM drivetrain and Shimano pedals and rotor cranks. It's a proper mismatch. It's Cell Italia saddles, Vittoria tires. And that bike comes in at pretty good value at 8,600. Oh, look at that. Inching closer to that five-figure mark already <laughs> is the Lapierre and Mavic Unity team. So they use Lapierre XRM 75th edition bikes this year. It's their 75th anniversary. Oh, yeah. So they've got fancy paint jobs. Annie Last, friend of the channel, has an amazing British champ one. She was British champ last year. Of course, yeah. And um, so they use, it's a lot of French parts. So Mavic wheels, Crossmax Ultimates, uh, Look, Extract Race Carbon Tie, that's carbon body, titanium axles. The team are running, the only XC team, running Michelin tires, which feels incredible because mm. Michelin used to dominate the, the tire market with their green treaded tires from back in the day. Um, but yeah, I guess it's that French connection because they've got the Mavic wheels, the Look pedals, the Z Fell cage, a very French team. But how much was the Lapierre? It comes in at 9,100. Six on our list is BH Coloma, uh, and they've got the BH Lynx bike, which is seen mm. under Davide Valero, who it's hard to miss him, apparently. But um, what more can you tell me about the Lynx? Well, the, the Lynx is, they're the first team using Karyang tyres, which is quite interesting. Good to see another tyre brand getting involved in cross country. And it comes in to a almost 10K, 9,400. <laughs> Number seven on the list, it's JB Brunex Superior Factory Racing's bike. Now, that is the Superior Team XF Factory Racing, I think. And 29 is in the title as well somewhere. It's, yep. And um, that's got the kind of full SRAM ecosystem as stock. Notably, mm. on the bike that we've seen and they're racing, there is the Phenom C1 Fiber Pure SL saddle. <laughs> it's a it, Swiss brand right. of saddle. Yeah. And I've got to say, I've not, I've not seen it yet, so I'm quite excited to see it. 
The saddle alone comes in at 509 Swiss francs. Uh, and for those who aren't that quick on yeah. conversion, I've got it written down as yeah. £460. So. God, that is a lot, because I wrote down about an S-Works Romin saddle on a later bike, and I thought that's got to be the most expensive one. It was 390 but you've just outdone me. How much is the bike overall? Overall, with those wonderful uh, XCR 1200 DT Swiss wheels, uh, it's 9500 so still not breaking still, the 10 all right, we'll see if we can fit another one in before we hit five figures. Next up is the Colloy Henrik Avancini racing team. Now, this is a bit of guesswork because there's quite a lot there that we couldn't really find out the price for. So they're racing on a Colloy Elite FS frame. That's available as a, a complete build with SLX, a Shimano group set for about four and a half grand. But they said they've got a special carbon layup. They've got gallo suspension tuning, internals, a whole host of other bits as well, don't they? They do, yeah. So we've sort of estimated for this that if the, uh, the frame alone costs around two and a half grand. Mm. We've got these nine-fold Yarrow SL Flex rims, yeah. which are very fancy in themselves, but they're also laced up with beard, bird, not quite sure how we pronounce it, but they're polyethylene. That's yeah. right, isn't it? So effectively, they're string spokes, yeah, which is kind of wild. And they're, they're like lots of tiny little strands, aren't they, yeah. put together? They're meant to be incredibly light. We need to get a set mm. in the service course, aka okay, the workshop. It's also got an amazing... 3D printed physique saddle yeah. and a wonderful integrated FSA cockpit. So all of that tech adds up to our first bike breaking 10 grand. Next up in the five figure category, so that's over 10K, is the Thomas Maxon, which, uh, yeah, Thomas Maxon, I'm sure I went to school with. But the Light Rider World Cup is complete with full XTR, Schwalbe tires, of course, the racer's choice, the ESI grip, but what mm. other spec has it got? One thing they do have that's a bit of a variety between the different team riders, and it shows how hard it is to do these lists, is that half the team have got the DT Swiss D232 dropper. It's the inverted one, so the, the kind of the stanchion goes on the bottom, yep. like an inverted fork. It's super light, it's only got 80 mil of drop, um, and it only has it as a binary up and down thing. Yep. Uh, so two of their leading riders, Mattis Fluckinger and Alessandra Keller, because they're slightly taller, they run a uh, the other DT Swiss dropper, the sort of regular one, okay, yep. it's cost slightly different. It's meant that we had to kind of put a price in the middle, £10,300. Bargain. In at 10 is the Canyon Collective. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> Collective. Collective. Uh, they're running the uh, Lux World Cup, kind of obviously titled, mm -hmm. XC race bike. It's used by Luana Lecomte. Uh, Lucas Schwartzbaum, lots of podium winners on this bike. Yeah. And um, that comes in at ten and a half thousand pounds. Next up, number 11, it's Ghost Factory Racing. So they race the Ghost Lexa FS World Cup bike. And this is the eye-catching one because they have the bike ahead, five-spoke carbon wheels. It's completely unique and you know it's a ghost and they are expensive. They are expensive. Uh, they've also got full SRAM group set. They've got the Quark power meter on there. They're running the uh, Crank Brothers uh, Egg Beater number 11. So that's the Thai one with lots of Thai bits dripping off it. Yeah. I think those are 400 quid oh, alone. That's a lot of money, isn't it? Um, and very jazzy Maxxis Aspen tires coming in at 10,550. Next up, Villa Pirelli factory team. So this is the team of uh, Derbyshire's own former British champion Cameron Orr and Sophie Heavy Pedersen, who has destroyed a lot of the Under-23 World Cups this year. And they are on the Willia Trestina Urta SLR, which is a pretty fancy bike. Aligning their Italian heritage, the team are using Pirelli tyres, mm -hmm. obviously quite famous. They're using Mike wheels and a unique Urta cockpit, which hopefully doesn't hurt her that much, <laughs> but it might do, because if you crashed, 600 quid alone. Oh my God. Uh, oh, nearly forgot, they're using the ESI phone grips, which almost everyone else is using. Yeah, couldn't possibly forget those. The bike is £10,600. In at 13 is the Orbea factory team, and they're riding the Oith. It's remarkably similar to the top end bike that you can buy, so it's got a full XTR group set, uh, including down to the pedals, which is yeah. a nice detail, and it even comes with the ESI racers edge phone grips. All comes in at a Fairly reasonable for a race bike, 10,700. Next up on the list is another factory team, it's Cannondale Factory Racing. So they're on a scalpel, which you can buy a pretty World Cup tier build sort of out of the factory, but they've got the special Lab 71 carbon layup, which is going to add a little bit. They've also got stages, power meters, 
and ceramic bearings, especially the bottom brackets, is something that I've seen in the pits. And uh, how much is that again? So this brings the complete bike to almost 11 grand. That's with a full XTR group set, FSA components, Fox rear shock, mm. because they're still running lefties. So I guess you're only paying for half of it, so it has kept it down a little bit. Next on the list, it's Prima Floor Mondraker Genuine's factory team. So they're on the Mondraker F Podium Carbon DCRR. It's a mouthful of a title, but it's actually quite a simple build, isn't it? It is. Lots of rock shocks for the fork and for the suspension, uh, and then lots of SRAM components. And it is £11,000 as well. Next up, Santa Cruz Rock Shocks. They're actually an Italian team, despite the American title sponsors, Santa Cruz and Rock Shocks, and they're running the complete Rock Shocks ecosystem, suspension, SRAM, drivetrain, but Crank Brothers pedals. Interestingly, they're on the candies. Interesting. So the Crank, the Egg Beaters is the most kind of common cross country pedal that we see, mm -hmm. so it's like a bit like a whisk, hence why Egg Beater name. Um, but the candy's a little bit bigger, it's got a little bit more body, but it mm. makes sense with cross country courses being so gnarly these days. It loads of jumps. Yeah, so it really does. I mean, I've I've used both of them and just that extra little bit of platform, it does go a long way, so I'm surprised. But that is £11,050. Up next is the Rock Rider Ford Racing Team. Now, this is probably the most difficult bike to price of the whole list. They have a whole host of prototype parts on this bike, the Rock Rider frame being the most notable, but also the Mandasu suspension, I think, and there's some other prototype bits on there as well. Uh, and it's coming in at 11500 Nice. Into the top five now. Mm. Team BMC. Uh, they're the only XC team to run Olin suspension, which is quite interesting. It only came out in June. Uh, it's got dual air chamber spring and lots of other damping stuff. The special bit on this bike is the self-dropping post that BMC have developed themselves because it's mechanical for the spring that pushes the seat back up and a pneumatic negative air chamber in the down tube that you pump up or pump out yep. and then it sucks the, the seat down and it, that'll do about 100 drops, okay, so it yeah. lasts about a race. Uh, and that, all of that together is £12,000. Trek Factory Racing XC is next. So they're on the new Trek Super Calibre, so they've been able to bring all the suspension in-house with RockShox, so it's got 80 mil of travel, no longer a Fox Isostrut shock, but a RockShox one and full SRAM T-type as well, Pirelli tyres, and then, of course, ESI Racer's Edge grips. All whack the price up to 12200 <laughs> It's getting there, isn't it? Specialised factory racing XC team. Um, yeah. Specialised pull out all the stops with their race bikes, whether it be the new Epic or the, the Epic sort of soft tail that they've also done. Um, mm -hmm. The Roman saddle costs 400 quid. They're running a SRAM group set on there, so that's almost 2,600. The exceptionally jazzy and nice Rover wheels are 2,200. And it is 12,600 pounds. For one bike, not the two. Of course. Scott SRAM MTB Racing Team is up next. So these are the bikes you see under their two former world champions, Kate Courtney and Nino Scherter. It's a Scott Spark with flight attendant front and rear, full new SRAM, Syncross wheel set as well, which is the only team in the field using those wheels, I think. All of it adds up to a kind of eye-watering, uh, but dentist-friendly, uh, 13,000. Nino's actually got the custom chain on his bike as well. So it's on each of the links. It's like printed a world title thing. It's, it's insane. Wow. God knows how much that costs. That's amazing. Not to be outdone by Scott Schramm's former world champions, the Ineos Grenadiers' current world champions, which is Pauline Framfro and Tom Pidcock. We think their Pinarello is probably the most expensive bike in the field, and we say probably because the P1 Racetech wheels don't have a price available at the moment, but the rest of the build is that fancy that we think it's just bumps it up enough. What is on the rest of the build? Well, we've got the Suntour Tact suspension system, so that's mm -hmm. like fork and shock, which we've got electronic damping. That's 4,300 alone. Wow. Uh, th the rest of the build is fairly eye-watering eye as well. So we've got full XTR group set, so that's fairly blingy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the most, which is Pinarello's house brand integrated copy. So it's a one-piece bar stem. Yeah. So that adds up to around 12 grand. So if we add in those P1 wheels, we guesstimate the price to yeah. be similar to the others, we're looking at about 14 grand. Oh, it's, a lot. And it's funny, once we got up to the top as well, there was a whole cluster of bikes around £11,000, and then suddenly it's just gone woomph, and the increments are in thousands rather than hundreds, but it's, that's, that is an expensive bike. 
So, at the start of the show, we wondered how much these bikes cost, and it turns out quite a lot. An awful lot. <laughs> An awful lot, yeah, indeed, yeah. Uh, Tom Pickock took the win at Nova Mesto, which I think it means it's the, the most expensive win yeah, of the year. Of the year of the so year, far definitely. on the on bikes. So which one, which is the World Cup, sort of like the cheapest bike that's won a World Cup? It's funny you should say that, because back in June, in the Lenzerheide in Switzerland, in the XCC, the short track, Jenny Risfeds won on the Ibis XC, which was the very first bike we talked about, the cheapest. So I guess it shows, once you reach a certain, you know, 8,000 pounds sort of level, it can be the rider rather than the bike, and she took that victory. Well, interesting. Thanks very much for creating and collating this absolutely mammoth list. It's huge. Um, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed getting, going through all these details. Which one was your favourite bike? Which one are you going to put a deposit down or remortgage or possibly sell a kidney for?